Hey there, this is chapter six, and these are all of the uh, questions. No, let's just do number one through number 20 for your conceptual understanding. The very first one says accelerations are produced by, and this one's really easy, it's just produced by a force or any forces. Uh, forces are pushes or pulls, and that's basically what makes something move. For number two, the acceleration produced by a net force on an object, and there are three things here. Um, it's inversely proportional to the mass, which means that when you see two items that are right next to each other, if mass goes up, acceleration has to go down if your force stays the same. The acceleration is directly proportional to force, so if acceleration goes up, then so does force and they are in the same direction. So if I want something to accelerate in this direction, I have to add a force in that same direction. For number three, it says a book weighs four newtons. When held at rest in your hands, the net force on the book is zero newtons. We know that starting at the book and coming down is the force due to gravity, and that would be mg. But the lady is also holding the book up, and we call that the normal force, and it would be the same amount in the opposite direction. So if the book was 10 newtons, she has to use 10 newtons of force in order to hold it up. If this one's negative and I add them together, I end up with zero newtons of force overall. For number four, number four says, how does acceleration object change in relation to its mass? It is, and as we said earlier, they are inversely proportional because they're next to each other. And if mass goes up, acceleration has to go down in order to keep the same amount of force. For number five, if shopping cart A has five times more mass in, in it than shopping cart B and the two carts are pushed with equal forces, you can expect the acceleration of shopping cart A to be one-fifth that of uh, shopping cart B. So here's shopping cart A, here's shopping cart B. So uh, the acceleration of shopping cart A, well actually, that's backwards. This would be A, and this one would be B. So the shopping cart A will have one-fifth the acceleration of shopping cart B. So this one will have a lot more acceleration than this will, because it's a lot easier to get it accelerated. Number six. For number six, it says if a truck has 10 times the mass of a car and the two vehicles are pushed with an equal force, you would expect the acceleration of the truck to be one-tenth that of the car. So here's our truck, here's our car, pushing with the same amount of force because this one has a much bigger mass than this one does. It will uh, not accelerate as, as quickly. So the acceleration here will be big and the acceleration here will be really small. For number seven, it says a force of three newtons accelerates a mass of three kilograms at a rate of one meter per second. So we see that right here. The acceleration of a mass of six kilograms acted on a force of six newtons will also have a acceleration or, or an acceleration of one. So that's why your answer here is the same. For number eight, a push on a one kilogram brick accelerates the brick neglecting friction to equal accelerate a 10 kilogram brick one would have to push with 10 times the force so here's the one kilogram brick and then if I wanted to accelerate the same for the 10 kilogram brick I've got to multiply my force times 10. Next question number nine says suppose a particle is accelerated through space by a constant 10 newton force. So here's that constant 10 newton force. Suddenly it experiences another 10 newton force. If it's already moving at 2 meters per second, we know that in the next second it would go up to 3 meters per second. But here at 2 meters per second we get this other force. It will not stop. It will not stop. Oops. Instead it will continue moving at that 2 meters per second until it encounters another force. For number 10, it says when the angle of an incline with a block resting on it increases, the normal support force decreases. So we'll go ahead and draw our triangles here. There is uh, the force due to gravity, or mass times gravity. This is the normal force. 
So this is n. If I increase the incline, my n will get a little bit smaller because I've got more of that incline there. So this arrow is a little bit bigger than this one. So if I increase the angle, the normal support force decreases or it goes down. For number 11, it says consider, consider a bowl, a ball, <laughs> sorry, rolling down a decreasing slope inside a semicircular bowl. Uh, the slope is steep at the top of the rim, so you see it's very steep here, and it gets less steep towards the bottom of the rim, where it's basically going to be zero and just kind of roll straight. Uh, as the ball rolls from the rim downward to the bottom, its rate of gaining speed decreases. So we see that because the slope isn't as big, the ball will not pick up speed as fast on the way down. So we're just saying that its acceleration decreases as it moves from the top to the bottom. For number 12, which is the next question, says a speeding truck, whoops, there we go, a speeding truck locks its brakes and skids to a stop. If the truck's total mass were doubled, its skidding distance would be, and actually this one's kind of weird because the answer is it will be exactly the same. So when they skid, they will be exactly the same. And here's why. The force of friction to stop this car is equal to mu times n. We know that for the bigger truck, the force of friction is bigger, the mu is the same, because its normal force is bigger. So the amount of distance that it takes to stop will be uh, exactly the same because the force on this one is bigger because it's got more mass. So actually they do come to the same stopping distance. Uh, for the next question, number 13, it says, if the force acting on a cart doubles, so here's our original force and now we'll double it, they want to know what happens to its acceleration. So we have force is equal to ma. We know that if I double the force, we know that the mass stays the same, and so we have to double the acceleration. So here's both a picture and, a, uh, and an equation to help you understand that one a little bit better. For number 14, it says, suppose the cart is being moved by a force. If suddenly a load is dumped into the cart so that the mass doubles, what happens to the acceleration? Here we've got a force. We'll just make it that size of an arrow. We have exactly the same force here. This one is empty, but we add a bunch of boxes. We all of a sudden drop a bunch of boxes down inside of this one so that the mass becomes 2m. Here we've just got m. It says that f is equal to ma. If I know that f is the same and the mass goes up by 2, we know that the acceleration has to go down by 2. So that would be 1 half of uh, the amount that we had before. And then that way, our, our force is exactly the same. So here, for number 14, it uh, halves. So in the previous one, it did something a little bit different. For number 15, a sports car has a mass of 1,500 kilograms and accelerates at 5 meters per second squared. What is the magnitude of the force acting on that sports car? Remember, F is equal to ma. Our mass is 1,500 and our acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. If you multiply those two together, you will get 7,500 newton meter per second squared, and we know that that is equal to 7,500 newtons. For number 16, it says a tow truck exerts a force of 2,000 newtons on a car, accelerating it at 1, meter per second per second. So let's use our equation again. We know F is equal to M times A. The force is 2,000 newtons. We know we're looking for the mass and it's accelerating at one meter per second squared. If we divide everything by one, we'll see that the mass here will be equal to 2,000 kilograms. For number 17, it says there is a jet has a mass of 40,000 kilograms. The thrust for each of the four engines is 20,000 newtons. What is the jet's acceleration when taking off? Here we have to be careful because we have four engines that are producing 
20,000 newtons of force. So we need to multiply those two together and I get 80,000 newtons. That's my force, so that's equal to F. We know that F is equal to M times A. We have 80,000 newtons of force. That's equal to 40,000 kilograms. And we have to multiply that times A. If we divide both sides by 40,000, we'll end up with an acceleration equal to 2 meters per second squared. For number 18, it says you pull horizontally on a 50 newton uh, crate with a force of 450 newtons. So we're pulling in this direction with 450 newtons. There's a friction force trying to keep it going in the other direction or keep it from moving. So that's 250 newtons. I want to find the acceleration of the crate. First thing I need to do is find the net force. The net force will be equal to uh, the, uh, the pulling force, so that's the force of the pull, minus the force of friction. That will be 450 minus 250. If I subtract the two, I end up with 200 newtons. Now we need to say F is equal to M times A. Our force here, of uh, our overall net force is 200 newtons. We know that uh, we have a mass of 50, and so if you, uh, if you take those two and divide them, you'll see that you'll have a 4 meter per second squared acceleration. For number 19, it says how much force is needed to accelerate a 4 kilogram physics book to an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So this one's really easy. We just take 4 times 2, and we end up with for number 19, 8 newtons. And then finally, for number 20, we have a jumbo jet cruising at a constant velocity with the total thrust of the engines is 50,000. How much air resistance acts on this jet? Well, if the jet's going this direction and has a force of 50,000 newtons, oops, too many, 50,000 newtons, and uh, it's moving at a constant speed. So here, constant velocity is important. We know that the air resistance has to be acting in the opposite direction at 50,000 newtons. So there's no acceleration here. Uh, and that means that it has a constant speed or velocity. And that is number one through number 20.